Praise the Lord. I'm glad to be here in your midst once again. I trust that God is keeping everybody safe and healthy and that, uh, that we're all upholding each other in prayer and, um, and support. Uh, let's uh, turn to Acts chapter 8. We're going to continue our study of uh, Acts. So I'm going to be primarily in Acts chapter 8 today. So let's turn, uh, I'm going to start with verse 9, uh, 10, and 11 from Acts chapter 8. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one, to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is that is the great power of God and to whom they had regard, because that of long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. So, I'm going to come back to uh, Simon in a few minutes, but I'm going to start with uh, what this place is. Uh, last week, Menu talked about how Philip was in this place called Samaria before he was uh, suddenly caught up or translated into, into the desert where he ministered to the Ethiopian eunuch. And he, he covered that portion. So I'm going to come back to what was actually happening in Samaria when Philip was taken up, right? So if you can put up that first slide, um, you'll see Samaria was a place that, as it says, was uh, bewitched by sorceries. So um, I know there's a lot of talk about um, climate change uh, these days. Um, and me, uh, since I work in the oil and gas industry, we hear it a lot. Uh, but I, that's not my topic. But I was going to talk about climate. As you uh, look at what climate actually means, it's different than uh, the weather, for instance. So the weather is a daily changing pattern. Like today, we have... Uh, lots of snow outside, right? Which was not the case yesterday, and and there's not supposed to be any snow tomorrow. So weather changes very frequently uh, throughout the year. But climate is the environment or the uh, the predominant kind of situation in a place in which the weather um, uh, in which the weather operates. So Samaria, as it's described here, was under the darkness of this type of uh, thing called sorcery. So if you look at what sorcery, um, actually before I go there, um, uh, just for a little bit of context, I think Minu touched on this last time, Samaria was, the, was still part of Israel, but if you remember, they were separated into two kingdoms, right, in the 10 tribes, and they were kind of on the outs, uh, considered to be outsiders, even though they were uh, originally Israelites, but over the course of time, uh, they intermarried with other cultures, and, and they're really a blend of uh, Israel. And even though they had uh, some uh, form of uh, Jewish beliefs, but they mixed in with other cultures such that um, uh, they, uh, they were considered outsiders by, uh, by the Jews or the Pharisees that lived in Jerusalem and in Judea. So they were not considered pure. So, so anyway, so what, as time passed, the climate of Samaria was such that they were ruled by um, uh, different people, but they had leaders that were using sorcery to bewitch. So bewitch really means, uh, you saw the word in verse 11, is to really blind yourself using, uh, the, uh, you, to be blinded or to be uh, cheated or deceived. Um, and usually by, you know, uh, uh, powers that are supernatural, okay? So uh, sorcery itself is talking about uh, um, using magic to bring about an outcome that you want to happen uh, that is important to you, right? I mean, I'm using very uh, uh, cleaned up language here, but really it's a dark art. Uh, it, is it was practiced heavily in that time. And, and you can see different people 
uh, practice that today. So, uh, so, but over time, as this was um, prevailing in this place, people were under the cloud or the climate of darkness and bondage, and they were, you know, as you can, I'll touch in a minute that there was, uh, you know, there were they had all kinds of problems, right? They were possessed with uh, with devils. Uh, they were they were having so many sicknesses and diseases, and and and, and they were just shackled by the chains that were of the sorcery that was prevailing. And they, the, and I'm going to talk about Simon later, but they had this person, Simon that had this magic that had a power over them and and they thought that this source of power came from God and they thought he was a man of God and because of that they were betrayed by this person and the whole climate of this place was darkness and bondage and they were bewitched or deceived by this okay so in that moment in that, in that environment, right, that I don't know how long that was going on, but I suspect for decades or centuries, uh, they were in this climate, right? It's climate describes something that's happened over a long period of time, right? So anyway, so they were in that situation for a long period of time. It's at that moment that Philip went there. And the reason Philip went there was because of persecution that happened Back in Jerusalem, right, everybody is scattered. So Philip, one of the uh, men that were chosen to minister to widows, showed up in this place. So no matter what you actually do, the word of God that works through you, the spirit of God that works through you is what brings the change. And I'll talk about that in a minute. So anyway, so Philip entered this dark situation, this place that was filled with darkness and people has so many needs and in bondage. And it was like light that burst through this place. Okay? And so you go to the next slide, you'll see. It was like a light that just pulled apart this darkness. That's why you read in verse 6 and 7 of chapter 8. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits crying with loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsies, and that were lame, were healed. And there was great joy in that city. And again in verse 12, But when they believed Philip, preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God, and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. See how the situation changed from darkness and, and depression and from being bewitched by magic and, and deception into believing for the saving of their souls. And because of that, they were delivered, right? So this is how the gospel works, that when the light enters into a dark place, the darkness cannot stand in that place. And the light flees the darkness away and the people were, the, uh, the, de uh, the unclean spirits cried out. The, the devils could not stand in that place. They left with loud voice because they could not tolerate the light that had entered that place. And people were delivered from being lame. So many times, you know, uh, uh, I know we sometimes chase uh, these things, but there is a truth to this that many times the reason for our bondage, the reason for uh, the uh, sickness and disease is, and that's not the only reason, as Pastor spoke about recently that, you know, Paul, he was, had, the devil brought a uh, thorn in his flesh, right? And God did not heal him and, uh, at that moment and said, my grace is sufficient for you. So, but there are many times the reason that we don't receive an answer, though, is because we're under the bondage of this some sort of darkness. Okay? And that's prevailing, and that has become a climate. And I'm not just talking about the unbelieving society. Sometimes in, in a believer's home, what climate have you allowed into your house such that this darkness is prevailing and 
and we, uh, many of our family members are under the bondage of this so that there is no answer to prayer. So, um, and this, uh, that is not my message really, but I will say that, so that's why we had to be careful, right? You know, what we allow into our lives. So like sorcery, you got to remember, there are only two sources of supernatural power, okay? Either it comes from God through the Holy Spirit. And if it does not come from God through the Holy Spirit, it does not conform to what is said in the Word of God, it is not from God. Just like uh, what it says here, the people believe that Simon was from God and they thought he came from God. So, but if it's not from God, any supernatural power that we see, whether it's virtual or any form of media, it is, it is from the devil. Okay, it's night and day. There's no gray in this. It's either from God or either from the devil. So that's why we have to be very careful what we allow into our homes, what we allow into our families, and to our children's, uh, children's life. Are we allowing them to be bewitched, are influenced or betrayed by sorcery, right? So be very careful what we allow into our lives. So maybe sometimes our prayers are not answered because we're under the, this climate Sometimes why are, you know, families broken and there's always fighting and unhappiness? Are you bewitched by some sort of power that you've allowed into your lives? I know we take this too far sometimes that we think everything is because of the devil. And, you know, we, that, that is not always the case. That's why we need the discernment and to be on our knees to understand, you know, God show me and not allow these, this climate to prevail in my life in my family's life. So, but I'll, I'll move on from there. But, but I just want to, before I leave that topic, point out the night and day difference in that city was because of the gospel that was preached. It was not Philip. If you notice the difference between Philip and Simon there, right? So Simon took the glory for himself and he used the magic powers to control the people. But where the gospel comes, there is freedom. So Philip did not point to himself, but rather allowed the gospel to work that people were delivered and they were free to worship the only name that is the name of Jesus Christ, as it says in verse 12. That is the one, a key difference that you see there. And you also see the joy, right? If we are in Christ, that joy should be a symptom of, or a pattern that we see in a believing family, in a believing church, in a believing community, is that joy that cannot be contained. Nobody told them to have joy. Nobody had to force them to have joy. But rather, when the gospel broke through that climate, that climate cannot stand in the face of the power of the gospel of Christ. But we need a certain few Philips to bring un, uh, unselfish Philips, selfless Philips to bring the gospel to places that are filled with this climate. As we asked on the Mission Sunday, are we willing to go and be like Philip so that we can transform people from be, being bewitched to believing? Are, you, are we willing to go and be like Philip? Okay, now it's a... Second part of my message, I was going to focus on Simon because a very curious thing happened there. Um, is so Simon, the sorcerer, um, and we all know the story, so I'll just kind of take a few seconds to reiterate, is Simon, he also saw this happening and all these great miracles, and he, he also believed. Okay, so it says he believed, so I, be, I, I believe the word that was written there that he was actually converted to a Christian. He is because it says he also believed and he was baptized and he became a disciple of Philip because it says he continued with Philip. And this is what, this is what the biblical pattern is. We have to make disciples, right? So this, even somebody like Simon can be converted, can believe in the gospel of Christ. There is room in the kingdom of God for somebody like Simon, okay? 
but he had to stay on that path. He had to stay on the path of dis, being dis, uh, a disciple. Where he went astray was when he saw the power. Remember what I said, there are only two sources of supernatural power. Anything that is beyond the natural, there's only two sources. One is from God and one, the other is from the devil. So when he saw the power of God, the supernatural power of God working in the climate that he, was, that he had left and he had controlled to many, uh, an extent, he w- it says in verse 13, Then Simon himself believed also, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. He wondered, oh, this is kind of like the things I was doing, but under a different power. Maybe I can do both. Now that was the problem there. Okay, He thought that he could do both. And the two, the gospel and his uh, desire to um, uh, have attention or control. That's what sorcery is. You want to control, right? That led him astray from the path of discipleship. And he said, uh, I'll skip over one part, that he's, uh, where the apostles came down and they laid hands on people and they received the Holy Spirit, which is a topic on itself. Uh, but uh, since I'm talking about Simon right now, I'm going to say, uh, he, uh, he, I'm going to skip to uh, verse 19. Saying, give me also this power, that whomsoever I lay hand, he may receive the Holy Spirit. Okay, so this is where he went wrong. That he thought that he could control this power just like he controlled the, ma- the power of magic in his previous life. And he wanted to pay money to receive this power, to have the ability to control this power. That's where Peter rebuked him. Your money perished with you. You thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money. This is what I want to talk about uh, where I, I fear that this climate has now prevailed in the Christian uh, realm as well. That climate that we want this power from God to, that we can control what we do with it. Sometimes our fame, many times our power and position and influence, many times uh, just to receive the attention, that we want to channel the power of the Holy Spirit for our own gain. This is just like Balaam in the Old Testament, how he was ready to receive money so that he can curse Israel and use the power of prophecy that he had to change the, uh, the course of the life of Israel. That's where God spoke through a donkey and said, You better stop. This power was given to you for a reason. To bless and not to curse. To bring joy and not to bring people under bondage. So this is the warning we have from God. As Peter said, your money perish with you. The anointing is not for our own fame. Many times I feel like even our own community, right? We uh, the reason we want the uh, we ask for the Holy Spirit is so we can we just have this experience of power come over us and the, we feel good when we are in a in a prayer service we just get all worked up. That is not why the Holy Spirit is given to us. It is to transform us and to work to bring others out of darkness. We also see this. Uh, you know, I don't want to spend too much. I know we are very emotional about this, so I won't go too much into it. But see how the name of God is being blasphemed by, by so-called prophecy about political outcomes. You know, I don't care what happens, you know, with, with who, uh, who rules the country. But I do care that the name of God is dragged through the mud and the gift of the Holy Spirit through prophecy. Be very careful. Don't be deceived or bewitched by people who call themselves prophets. Okay? Be very careful. God, Jesus himself said... My kingdom is not of this world. If it was so, my disciples would have fought each other. We are not called to fight each other, whether Democrats or Republicans or whatever, and use the power of prophecy to bring what we want 
into society. That is not what the prophecy is for. It's to bring, be, bring people out of darkness. And lastly, how, how is, if you look at the climate in us, are we using, uh, are we using this power, uh, I'll ask the worship team to come forward. Are we using this power uh, of, of God to, to uh, receive attention to ourselves? Look at how we project ourselves on social media or our other platforms that using the talents we have to, to receive attention for ourselves so we can, we can be like this Simon. Be very careful. Be very careful. When we even think for a second that God gave us anything but any of these, but to glorify the name of Jesus Christ. It doesn't mean anything that we do what we want. In the end, we say, this is for the glory of God. That is not how the glory of God works. He did not give us any anointing so that we may bring glory to ourselves or anything at all. But why did he, why did he give us the anointing? I'm going to turn. This is the last thing I'll talk about in Isaiah chapter 61. The spirit, uh, uh, first couple of verses. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn. This is what Philip did. He came to bring, just like the light, that picture I showed, the light breaking through the darkness. He came because he had the anointing. Remember in chapter 6, he received the anointing. He came to preach good tidings, which is the gospel to the meek, to open the prison to those that are under the bondage, and to comfort those that are more. That's exactly what happened in Samaria. It is not for his own gain, uh, but he came to deliver those who are under bondage. And that's why joy spread through that city. That's why uh, later Peter and John came to that city and said, have you been baptized only uh, uh, in the name of Jesus? Have you received the power of the Holy Spirit? And they laid hand. They said, we have not heard so much as the Holy Spirit. And then they laid hands on the people and they received the Holy Spirit. So anybody... Like Simon didn't receive it because he wanted it for himself. But anybody who wanted the power of the Holy Spirit so they can minister and, and do what Philip did in that community, they, they, they received the power of the Holy Spirit. This is what the anointing is for. This is why we should desire the anointing of God to preach the gospel, to deliver the captives so that we might bind up the brokenhearted. May his name be glorified.